A major challenge to the scientific community is to have reliable assessment of future water resources, particularly under the uncertain impact of the climate change. My research is how watershed as complex and dynamical systems will respond and evolve under the future climate and environmental changes. The first thing we need to talk about is the natural hydrologic cycle and watersheds. A watershed is an area of land that drains to a common point of interest, like a lake, a reservoir, or an ocean. Watershed is an important part of the hydrologic cycle, which is, in a global sense, the occurrence, distribution, and movement of water in the natural environment. The hydrologic cycle begins with the evaporation of water from large water bodies, such as lakes and oceans. Moist air forms clouds, and these clouds are transported around until they precipitate over the land surface. The precipitation may be in the form of rainfall or snowfall, mainly as a function of current temperature. Some of this water may evaporate back to the atmosphere from soil or vegetation, and some may run off surface and form streams and rivers, and some may infiltrate into the ground. Part of the infiltrated water may be taken by plant roots and transpired back to the atmosphere. Another part of it may find its way to the rivers and lakes, and the remainder may infiltrate deeper, recharging groundwater. There is a group of scientists mainly focused on natural processes and to represent them as closely as possible in watershed models. In order to do the hydrological modeling, uh, I extract different uh, relevant inputs uh, for hydrological model. One of them is uh, ground surface topography. As you can see here on the top, we have uh, the elevation data. We have river network information, as well as we have soil data of the basin. To drive the model, we need uh, climate data. We use ground-based data as well as satellite observation. After supplying all this necessary input, uh, uh, the model will produce partial temporal outputs. Here you can see the evapotranspiration output of the model over Saskatchewan River Basin and also the runoff and then change in storage. One of the final temporal products would be like this. So we have a of evaporation variations and also runoff and precipitation on the top within a given year. We also use additional satellite data to uh, validate our model uh, prediction. Our aim is to improve our flood prediction as well as uh, drought detection uh, over our region. But the natural hydrologic cycle is only half of the story. My research also involves understanding the human footprint on the watersheds. Human activities directly change the dynamics of water movement in a watershed, and in cases even override the natural processes. The human interventions into the hydrological cycle are in a variety of forms, including building dams for water storage, regulation, and hydropower generation. Building diversion canals for transferring water to one point to another, and water withdrawals for different competing demands, such as domestic, agricultural and industrial demands. Such human interventions in many watersheds are profound and need to be understood and modeled. My main work is to deal with the human interventions. We are uh, using the data from the Environment Canada and also the uh, reservoir uh, regulation authorities. I have developed a model for the Upper Bow River Basin. This is part of the South Saskatchewan River Basin. The water is passing through the reservoir and deal with the demands of the uh, Calgary city. The unique aspect of our research is that we develop a unified watershed modeling framework that brings together and couple both the natural and human-induced components and processes with a high level of detail. This way, we can improve the realism and accuracy of our models, and with better models, we can do a better job in flood forecasting and predicting the future of water resources. To gain a holistic understanding of the watershed behavior, my team and I have also developed a systems theoretic approach. The idea is to optimize the model performance and to quantify and reduce uncertainty in model predictions. I have developed a method called WARS, which stands for Variogram Analysis of Response Surfaces. 
worse breaks the total variability of a system into different contributing components, and that way we can identify dominant controls of the watershed behavior under current and future climates. My job here is essentially to understand and analyze the sophisticated hydrological models we have here thoroughly. We applied WARS to multiple case studies using high-performance computing resources. Firstly, WARS uses a special sampling strategy called star sampling to generate thousands of parameter sets from a parameter space. Then, we run the model for all those parameter sets to find the model output for each parameter set. Finally, WARS uses the information from both the parameter sets and the corresponding model results to generate various metrics that can quantify uncertainty and identify the most important processes controlling the model and watershed behavior. These processes have a lot of interactions on each other over time, and if we don't take care of those interactions, we may not have a high-fidelity watershed model that can be relied on for future projections of our water supply.